we have both of the bases uh, up on stilts. Basically, these are just uh, four inch bolts, extra bolts I had in my stash from um, previous Y block tear down and rebuilds. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, this just pops it up so that the lever stays off uh, the surface you're working on here. Work the butterflies back and forth and gives you access to things. Um, a little bit more easily. Uh, it's just a cheap way to put it up on a pedestal. Um, I do have three prepped. Uh, two of these are prepped um, for a better vacuum signal to uh, upgrade to a 57 to 64 mechanical and vacuum distributor. And then this one here is a pretty nice one as well uh, as far as the base and there's no slop in the butterfly shaft and all of that. I'm going to save this one to do a, a stock rebuild uh, like it would have been in 56 for a Lodomatic. Um, that's the idea with that third base there. I do have three kits actually. I got a kit in here, then I got the other two kits. So we we'll had to put them all together and uh, things are coming along nicely. All right, one of the things you wanna make sure of when you're rebuilding one of these Holly 4000s is that you use a quality kit. Uh, this one here is a brand new one from Daytona. Um, you can see here it says ethanol resistant parts made in the good old US of A. Um, I've used these kits uh, most of the time building these Holly 4000s. This one right here comes with a brand new secondary diaphragm. We're going to go ahead and open it up and take a look at it. Um, always get yourself a quality kit. Don't um, use that NOS kit that's on the shelf dried up parts and all the rest of it and stuff that really won't do serve you well um, if you run your vehicle with ethanol. So we'll open up the box here and uh, take a look at what's inside. Um, these are very good quality kits here. Um, good instructions. Um, very nice uh, float gauge here. You punch out these cardboard pieces. And of course, uh, the ever-present instruction sheet that uh, printed, I think this was printed in the 60s. Yeah, this says 1967. And then of course on the back there, your parts listing and the diagram. And uh, you're certainly gonna need that. These kits here will come with two gaskets. Uh, some of the other kits, they don't come with two. The reason that they would come with two gaskets is because most of these teapots, if not all the ones that I've seen, have always had some kind of a phenolic spacer. Uh, between the carburetor and the intake manifold that's certainly to help with uh, diffusing the heat. Of course, we have our float bowl gasket. Um, this is for one that would have a governor uh, on it as well. And this is nice to have this uh, uh, gasket for your air cleaner. Of course, a brand new secondary diaphragm. I highly suggest that you replace this one, especially if you don't know um, how long the previous diaphragm's been in service. Sometimes guys rebuild these carburetors and they'll dunk the whole thing to a can of Berryman's and of course that will eat up uh, all of this rubber here and different things and these things also have a tendency to dry out over the years. You definitely don't want a leaky secondary diaphragm or your secondaries will not open. And I remember this is um, controlled uh, by two things really, a vacuum and then also a spring uh, that's keeping this in check. So and of course, here's your secondary um, diaphragm, the chamber there, the body. Uh, this is the gasket that uh, goes or goes between the secondary diaphragm body and the throttle body itself. And then um, we also have this piece here. And sometimes these kits are felt, sometimes they're just flat out neoprene. And this is what goes on your air horn. And uh, I use weather stripping, um, excuse me, weather strip adhesive. Uh, just like this here from 3M, very good. Uh, it says gasket adhesive, this stuff is great. It's very sticky by the way, it does dry very fast. And then of course we got your um, choke gasket here, brand new spring for your float in your fuel bowl. Got the spark control valve here. Notice that we have two 
seats in here for your needle. One is the screw-in variety. See that there with the threads, and then one is a smooth bore. Um, a lot of 55s and prior used a smooth bore for the seat with a spring uh, that kept tension and kept the seal. And of course, uh, kind of prone to leak there if it didn't have a strong enough spring. Um, highly recommend that you use the threaded seat there. Then of course, uh, what's nice with these kits from Daytona is that you've got uh, both the, uh, I guess the 55 and sixes, they're gonna use this size, a larger size of secondary. And we'll look at the secondary tubes from a 55 here, of course. Um, staking these o-rings down to the throttle body into the fuel bowl cap fuel bowl lids very important that it's done correctly also that when you put the secondary tubes back in you don't have any rough edges uh, to cut or um, do anything to rough up these o-rings i always use just a little bit of white lithium grease with that uh, when putting that back together and then uh, you got two sizes, and then you got the uh, one for the early, the early size. Most of these would be 54 and prior um, for those Holly 4000s. This is your economizer valve that um, this right here screws down to the uh, ceiling of your float bowl lid. And of course, you got a lot of small pieces. What's nice about the Daytona kit as well, among other things, that you've got new. Um, New idle um, set screws. Of course, you see that needle there. That's going to go into the uh, float bowl as well. You got a nice grommet for your um, hot air tube that comes up from your manifold up underneath of your throttle body. That's important there. Some necessary gaskets, um, eclipse, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And these things are all ethanol compliant, which is very nice and uh, very needed in 2020. Overall, I can I tell you, I highly recommend the Daytona kits. They're very nice, very well put together. Um, this one here is $78, and then uh, include the shipping in that. I think it's nine bucks to ship this to me, so roughly about 90 bucks. It may seem like it's a lot, but um, very much a quality kit, and um, I highly recommend it to you. All right, just a word about the way that the Daytona Carburetor Company makes their float valves. And uh, they really call it a valve and not a float needle. Uh, the reason being here, when you look at the instructions, it explains to you that uh, that seat there, especially made, you can see there there's a rise as it, uh, the orifice is there, and then you got a rubber lip, almost a rubber pad. Um, going to hold this up right here on what was your needle, um, that rubber pad right there will go inside of your seat, basically, just like so. Uh, you do need to make sure this is installed correctly. Obviously, don't install this upside down <laughs> with this rubber part against your float. Um, install this to where the uh, red rubber piece goes inside of your seat there. And you can see, I'm not gonna press on this very hard, but this, this will give a little bit there. And um, again, these the reason there's two of these, the earlier models had the smooth bore, most of them anyway. And then um, later fuel bowls um, had a threaded bore uh, for that seat to screw in there uh, to keep that nice and um, tight there. Of course, the O-ring's gonna go around there and then uh, you got this piece here. Well, yeah, there we go. Just like so. All right, let's talk uh, floats a little bit. And uh, these float springs, there are two different kinds. And there's a reason why um, the cone is preferred. Uh, let's look at this float bowl, and I'll just show you real quick. I've set one up here. Uh, you can tell that um, the normal cylinder shape is used in this float bowl. And there's a tendency for the um, top of that cylinder to creep over on top of the power valve. may not look like it's a big deal, but when you put 
uh, your lid on your economizer valve that large surface right there is going to be riding and it can catch at the spring the top of the spring can catch in between your economizer valve and your power valve i'm sure that's why ford went to the cone shape uh, so you want to make sure that you use the cone shape if you have it um, if not to be honest with you i've never heard of someone having trouble but i'd imagine that's why um, these were replaced later on uh, with the cone so makes sense to me uh, when you look at this and its action uh, there's a tendency for that spring to creep something else to make mention of as you're going through uh, cores be careful about these um, accelerator pump rods uh, these are hollow they're very easy to uh, bend and when you're trying to take one apart and you're trying to deal with parts that have frozen up over time because of corrosion um, be careful that you don't bend this and then of course if you got some cores lying around and you're just some of them not paying attention um, you want to put one back in that's that's not bent and that uh, the shaft is straight um, easy check on that obviously is to put that through um, the board there and it just ought to go through pretty freely um, in your fuel bowl um, as it slides up and down there so uh, just a little nuance there with these carburetors you can tell when you look at these parts that are very clean they have been blasted uh, in the blast cabinet the glass bead cabinet and boy it makes them very nice of course not everything can be blasted or do i suggest you blast everything i don't blast the bases um i don't blast these uh rods for the accelerator pump uh, if you know anything about these these are vented and that means that uh, they're hollow and you can tell there's no way really to clean that out um all the way through uh, so I don't blast these. I, I clear the wire wheel and all of that. But um, most of the parts, the small parts, you can blast and uh, clean up. Once you do that, I suggest that you use something like this product here called Rush Prevention Magic. Um, it's not cheap. I believe I may have paid 30 bucks just for this little can right here. It may sound like that's pretty expensive, but uh, it does a great job on coating um, any bare metal parts that are clean without any rust. I blast them and then basically use a heat gun, another heat source, and heat up your part. I like to string it up with baling wire. And then um, this rust prevention magic will really melt into its, uh, any kind of surface that's been warmed up a little bit. And then you just brush off the excess, let it dry. And it does a real good job in protecting um, that bare metal piece from the elements. Uh, a little bit better than using paint or anything like that. Uh, I really, I really do like uh, that product there. So we'll keep working here on all the parts. And basically, the parts for four carburetors, all the hardware, we'll keep all that stowed in our containers until we're ready to start putting the two together. I had a lot of questions about um, particular parts that kind of mimic the plating uh, that Ford would use at zinc plating. Or uh, I don't know if you call it chrome, zinc chromate or something of that nature. But anyway, it's that uh, kind of off, off green um, look to it. And uh, basically what, it, what I use is a product called um, Carb Renew. It's uh, from Eastwood. I don't know if another company might make something like this, but uh, it does uh, give the carb carburetors a good appearance. But uh, basically, you see this side here of this cover to a secondary diaphragm assembly. I, I, I media blast that. Uh, you know, use um, baking or the soda blasting if you don't do that use glass beads but then boy you really got to clean everything out very good and uh, with wash and uh, compressed air and all of that and then um, pretty pretty simplistic to paint these parts here 
Um, I like to hang them up on a wire rack and paint a number of them all at one time uh, just to prep the parts for these particular carburetors. There's so much that can swap. Um, for instance, these uh, secondary diaphragms and um, they'll fit uh, three or four different years, uh, the air horns and so on and so forth. But I um, highly recommend using this product here, uh, Carb Renew 2. Um, of course, it says bronze there, although it really looks green, I think, on camera and um, in the right kind of light. And uh, basically, the other parts, what I'll do is I'll um, maybe coat them. I have some small parts here just to bring out, like the choke plates and uh, some of the pieces of hardware that go on the linkage. Um, these covers for the secondary tubes that um yeah, well even even this small piece of wire linkage like like this rust prevention magic uh works very good uh, with these particular parts um how about the uh, choke choke lever uh, that operates on the side as well uh, those kind of parts there um blasting them and using rust prevention magic uh, really lets them hold up well i don't do much with the throttle bodies as a matter of fact, why don't we watch a short clip about that right now. The base is uh, up on stilts. Basically, these are just uh, four-inch bolts, extra bolts I had in my stash from um, previous Y-block teardown and rebuilt. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, this just pops it up so that the lever stays off uh, the surface you're working on here work the butterflies back and forth and gives you access to things um, a little bit more easily. Uh, it's just a cheap way to put it up on a pedestal. Um, I do have three prepped. Uh, two of these are prepped um, for a better vacuum signal to uh, upgrade to a 57 to 64 mechanical and vacuum distributor. And then this one here is a pretty nice one as well. Uh, as far as the base and there's no slop in the butterfly shaft and all of that. I'm going to save this one to do a, a stock rebuild uh, like it would have been in 56 for a Lodomatic. Um, that's the idea with that third base there. Okay, we're getting set to do the modification here to um, update the vacuum signal on the Holly 4000 to um, be able to use a distributor from 57 to 64. Basically what we need to do, uh, according to the article, is to go ahead and drill out this plug here. And we'll just use uh, put a screw in there and tap it and um, pop that out. And then as you can tell, the um, vacuum here, this, this port that's sealed off, runs um, right to there. There's a brass uh, plug that screws into there. And of course, this also, this same signal, or I guess the same line, you can see the port, how it runs, it runs over here to the spark control valve uh, that goes into there. And uh, if we were running a Lodomatic distributor, we would leave that just as it is. But since we're not, um, we're going to go ahead and do this modification, and we'll do it to both bases so that uh, we can get the vacuum signal correct for a 57 to 64 distributor that has... Uh, both a vacuum and a mechanical advance. Well, that plug popped right out of there. Um, really no need to uh, tap to pull out the plug. Uh, once the drill caught that, the uh, thing went right out. So uh, this is a quarter inch um, inside diameter hole. And you can see that hole in there that goes over to here. So the big deal now is obviously these chips you get all that out of there and make sure this is super, super clean. All right, so we go ahead and cut off an inch of uh, quarter inch, quarter inch copper tubing, uh, outside diameter quarter inch, and then um, just basically took a rubber mallet and went ahead and bottomed it out inside that hole right there. And you can see if you look in there, you know how much of the light shining there that you can see 
um, but uh, there is um, a vacuum orifice in there. There's a hole that goes straight through uh, to the throttle bore back in there. And maybe if we can get a light uh, from behind it, we can see. All right, you can tell that there is a hole that goes through to the uh, throttle bore here. Um, part of the primary throttle bore and this quarter inch uh, tubing here is going to be our vacuum source for the distributor now. Just a word here if you're going to block off um, where this original spark control valve goes. This is obviously a power valve plug uh, common for a lot of hollies. But um, if you end up using the gasket that comes with these plugs, it's a little too large. Uh, not for the plug, obviously it fits like it's supposed to, but uh, the problem is you're gonna have so much space um, when you install this that this will actually rest above this lip right here. Um, I guess I'll show you right here just without installing it, but basically that will be above the lip just enough, just like so, to where it's going to get some um, air in there and it won't seal entirely. What I did is basically use um, the gaskets for the original spark control valve and go ahead and put these on. And uh, this one here, you can see it fits and it's, boy, it's really nice and so. You want to make sure that's entire, entirely sealed because the only vacuum uh, source you want is this. Um, quarter inch tube right here and if this isn't sealed it will leak uh, this needs to be sealed as well your original distributor uh, vacuum line and then of course on the underside as well um, that needs to be sealed off so uh, make sure that those things are reinstalled correctly and uh, guarantee that you have no leaks